Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean LaFlock. I'm here with Scotty Hagnes. This is Conversations Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity. Scott, how are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you uh, doing there? I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm a little on edge right now. I had disappointment in the uh, workout this morning. Um, oh, I'm pretty, you've already uh, done it. Huh? Pretty deflated, you know, but again, uh, I feel that way right now just because, you know, I had an expectation of um, how things would go and, you know, my, uh, the rug gets pulled out from under you a little bit, but I know, you know, through experiences before that, um, you know, things happen for a reason and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the person I need to be in order for me to complete this workout. So I kind of got to go to the drawing board a little bit. We can talk about what's going on and how to, uh, go from there. So I, uh, warmed up, uh, got a good night's sleep last night. So for those of you who don't know, what the workout is this week. It's uh, 18.4 that we're talking about. And it is uh, Diane, which is uh, 21.15.9 deadlifts, enhanced stand push-ups into 21.15.9 deadlifts with a heavier weight and then handstand walks. The two things that, um, the, the thing that changed this year is the handstand push-up standard. So now it is your height plus half of your forearm length to your fist. Mm-hmm. Um, so I warmed up well to for the deadlift, that kind of thing. I watched Myra do it. Myra actually finished it in five or eight fifty three or eight forty three. So she Ooh. she did fairly well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, we broke it up right from the beginning. And I, I again this that was kind of what my philosophy was in this workout was um I think I had her do six five 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 on the first set of deadlifts, and then I believe she did eleven and ten, and then um maybe five, five, five on the handstand pushups and then like five, four. And she did that the same for the deadlifts. Um, and then got to the third, three, uh, excuse me, the two Oh five bar. And she did, uh, I think she just did three and then two and then one and then a two and then the one and a two and just kind of, you know, crunched through the 21 uh-huh. yeah, went on broken on the handstand walk, which wasn't a problem for her. Then back to the bar. I think she did like doubles, doubles and singles for the 15 reps did the handstand walk unbroken and then came back and I think did three and then two, 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 one or something like that. So she, she, you know, grinded through it and then finished the handstand walk unbroken again. Um, the handstand, I, I didn't foresee for me the handstand um, standard being that tough, uh, b- being that different because I do practice very good handstand uh, quality and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was um, no joke, right? Like it's I, legit. I, uh, went out and measured mine and I'm, you know, not entered or anything, but I had someone check me out and it was a struggle to get to where I needed to be to lock out reps. Yep. It was uh, much harder than the prior standard, which. Oh my God. Yeah. And that's what your, your reference is, right? Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, that definitely dejected me. So I did the 21, I I kicked up on the wall and did some handstand pushups and it was good. You know what I mean? Like no problem. As soon as you know, you kick up into the wall and you're now trying to do them with volume and your rib cage, uh, you're getting more extension from your low back than you are your thoracic. That's mm-hmm. when the standard starts to, to really file in because you're not getting the same height from your low back as you are from your mid back. Mm-hmm. So that flare of the rib cage definitely cost me. And I think I got no rep like three times on the first 21. And then I was like, oh, okay, wow. let's just stop there. I was like, I'm not ready to do this standard. It's only going to get worse from here. So I was like, I did 21 deadlifts. I did the 21 handstand pushups. I was like, okay, we're done. So I shut it down there and then, you know, worked mobility and worked some breathing exercises and kind of really assessed what's going on because the deadlifts didn't feel great as is, um, you know, not something where I would be able to be substantial on the 315. Um, I, I built up the 315 in the warm up and I did a tr- quick triple at it and it just felt like dog shit as is. And then the handstand push-up, my shoulders felt very open, but it was that positional, you know, it was, it's probably um, just being super flat right now through my upper back and thoracic that prevents me from getting the flexion from my upper back. Um, and it's kind of going into my lower back right now. So, you know, again, like I, I opened up with the podcast, like I'm not the person I need to be to do well in this workout right now. So I got to kind of get to the drawing board over the next day or so. And kind of understand what I want to do, where do I need to go. And again, this is always pushes me out of the areas that I think I'm good at. And I, it pushes me further into mastery of those skills um, and positions. So, um, you know, definitely, again, uh, I have a, a, an air of like disappointment on me. But, you know, on the other side, I know it's going to be worth it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's probably a good call shut it down rather than, you know, getting a bad result and adding that fatigue. Practice, mobilize. Basically, it was, yeah, just a little practice run, see what the standard was like. I only did 21 deadlifts and 21 handstand push-ups. It's not yeah. like it killed me. No. Yeah, um, yeah. Either I'll probably hit it tomorrow. I, I, I'm itching to maybe to hit it tonight. But, you know, I think the right thing to do would be to hit it tomorrow and yeah, um, and uh, just just, uh, you know, sit on it for one more day um, and, and, and own it and earn it. You know what I mean? Not force it and, and, and think that I'm good to go, but actually improve, you know, mm-hmm. accept what where I am right now and then improve to a point where I can actually uphold the standard and not bullshit it and have to fucking grind through deadlifts with terrible technique. I want to be able to use the floor. I want to be able to drive with my legs. Um, so this again, pushes me out of what I, I feel I I'm capable of and then going to the next step. So, you know, in a lot of ways, challenges like this, um, you know, if you have the correct mindset, I have the, um, capability of, uh, in massive improvements in, in your overall, uh, abilities. Yeah. Okay. Stepping stone to the next level. You're right. Absolutely. You got to break yourself down to build yourself up a little bit. Now, um, did you happen to watch uh, Scott and uh, Giancarlo Goldmanson go last night? Yeah, yeah, I did. So uh, when the workout came out, what was your thoughts? First off, uh, did we... Did we First off, him? I was like, yes, I called the handstand walk. And we've been saying that the entire time, and I've been having my athletes train handstand walks. And, like, I knew it was going to happen, and, and it was actually cool to get validated in that way. I yeah. wish it didn't have heavy deadlifts just for my own sake, but um, I think it's a fair workout. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna have people go to regionals, I think it's fair. I think most oh, yeah. if you're most, a regional. You... Yep. The other okay. thing is, I think most people who are just an avid CrossFitter doing Diane in under nine minutes is like a challenge. Like uh, that's a pretty cool mm-hmm. thing. You're, you're doing a benchmark workout and you're trying to get it under nine minutes. Now that yeah. being said, then giving them a bonus of having as many deadlifts at three fifteen, basically in the time remaining. I don't love that or two Oh five for the ladies respectively. I'm sure there'll be uh yeah, some, uh, ugly form under fatigue, you know, or yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I mean, the sport like a little that bit. Isn't true of a lot of uh, a lot of these workouts. Yep, and um, you know, I I, I kind of feel bad for some people who have been really hitting the handstand walks who aren't going to actually see them. You know, right? I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I have some folks, same thing. I had a handful of folks really make good breakthroughs in the last few months and really start dialing in handstand walks, but yeah. I highly doubt they'll actually see them. Yeah, and, and you know what it is? It's, it sucks, and that sucks, but it's. Uh, you know, if you're not getting to the, to, to the, I mean, if it takes you that six minutes ish, you're not getting through the 21, 315 pound slash 205 pound deadlifts. Exactly. You're, you're having to do that Diane in under 430 to get through to that, to even have a chance at heading the handstand walks. Yeah. Um, now they're kind of funny aside. I've got a, a guy, one of my programming clients, he's like 63 and He's turned into a handstand walking beast the other day. We were two cones. He'll go out and do a perfect 180 around a cone. And oh, that's awesome. around the other cone. And, uh, of course, he can't take advantage of his skill because even to be rx he can't do handstand walking. Yep. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's just something that he decided he wanted to chase to a high degree. And Yep. Um, it's interesting. The uh, as as last week was a double under workout with some skill involved. This is a deadlift workout. Obviously, this is ninety yeah. deadlifts um, under you know moderate to heavy load. Um, so you know if you're if you're good at handstand pushups and you're not good at, at deadlifts, you're going to suffer. It's However, be not that good for you. in just thinking about that, if you're great at, at deadlifts, but you can't uphold the handstand push-up standard, it's going to be miserable. And you're not getting that many deadlifts done, taking advantage of what you can do. Exactly. You're going to be stuck over on the wall fighting for every rep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I was in a handstand. I thought I was a full lockdown handstand, freestanding, or not freestanding, but my feet on the wall, waiting, you know, like, am I there? Am I there? I mean, I'm reaching up to my shoulders, and they're like, no, you're still half. I'm like... 
and it, it, you get to a point where you're like, what do I have to do to get my, you know, heels over this line? Um, but again, it's it's about position of your midline. If your if your midline is is not in the right spot, um, you know, it's definitely going to be a challenge for you. The other thing is that if you don't have uh, correct proportions, it's going to be also more challenging for you to get to uphold that standard. So if you have very long forearms, um, long hands relative uh, to your height, uh, this is going to be miserable. And I can I can envision a yeah. bunch of CrossFit athletes like Elijah Muhammad, who has notoriously long arms and is not. I mean, he's probably got the wingspan of like a six foot six person, and he's only about six foot. He's going to have a really challenging time with this. Um, well, here's another thing which I found is, is uh, the other large group of CrossFitters are going to have issues with this are all the guys mostly, but women too, that can't fully lock out their elbows uh, because it does not take into account the fact that if I can't lock out my elbows, I technically am not quite as tall when I'm stacked, right? Miserable. I know exactly who you're talking about. I have a lot of guys who, who are in the same boat. They're like, here overhead. Yeah, like on pull-ups, they'll do their pull-ups like this. You know, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. That's, you might be wearing high. I, mean, heels I can only imagine. That at least that's got to be at least an inch. You know, for some people, if not more, yeah. just right there. And um, you know, and, and and a lot of people could piss and moan about the standard. I like it. I like the standard. I mean, I like that there is a standard, and, and if it makes you lock them all the way out, then absolutely, and everyone's got to do it. You know. Yes, and that's you know, absolutely, and that like. You know, it, it takes away the ambiguity. It takes the subjectivity away because, you know, I, I'll, I'll be the first one to say that on the um, hands, old hand and stand push-up standard, you extend your lower back, you pull your shoulder blades together, and that's the standard. Like, if everybody is doing it, you got to do it. You, you know, if you could be the martyr and, and be miserable, but this yeah. way they're doing it, it really makes it challenging for you to skirt the system, and I really appreciate that they've taken the time to kind of think this through and make some kind of standardization that makes it – um, a little better, yeah. A little better, right? A little better. Yeah. Well, remember when the first standard came out several years ago? That that threw people for a loop. It was, you know, yep, hard to get the full range and so now. <laughs> yeah. Just another level now. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting because Scott Panchak actually opened the uh, CrossFit Open series with handstand push-ups. He went against uh, Josh Bridges, and Josh Bridges got crushed on that workout. It was, was he was the one he was having a really hard time making couldn't the, uphold the standard. At that time new standard, right? Yep. And then he figured it out and came back within a couple of days and put up yeah, a really good you know, score if I remember right. Figured but, it out also uh, known as figured out how to measure himself correctly. Um, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a guy who can't lock his elbows out with his hands over his head. Yep, so that you would know. be uh yep, and, add, and, and, add and a challenge for the sure. other, absolutely. The other thing that will uh vary from person to person is what's the ability to bring your hands in toward each other to, to increase the height of your body. So obviously, mm-hmm. if you're a person who's in that Y shape and you're doing your handstand push-ups out here and you're all of a sudden forced to bring your hands in, but now that brings your shoulder into a more uh, into a lower position, now you're fighting against that shoulder position. So you, know, you may yeah. not be able to bring your hands in. Now you're really having to rely on your ability to get that shoulder flexed get that straight body line, that kind of thing. It's kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah. So a lot some interesting challenges for uh, different strategies to warm up athletes that are going to be facing that. Yep. A lot of warm up, a lot of, um, you know, uh, getting the the hip flexors and the psoas kind of opened up a little bit because it's a flexion extension movement. If you're a person who uses your lower back on handstand pushups, you are going to have a bad workout. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, what do you think about the scaled workout? Uh, I I think it's still I think it you know as we we talked about last week uh, you know trying the scaled workout trying to deliver the similar metabolic feel to a fairly high level person doing the RX one and and in that regard I, I think it delivers I mean as we also as we mentioned last week you know most uh, we train mostly a gen, gen pop clientele and yep. so i've been i've seen two groups already do it uh, all except one guy doing it in some you know scale the cool thing about the morning class i had from people that were fairly new women men experienced more experienced people everybody did it and this is an oxymoron they did it rx scaled yes scaled rx right there you go yeah and uh 
everyone did it and got a, a what I would say is a really good stimulus. Yep. And, you know, there was it did nobody went to you know pure shit form by any means. It was all it was really good. I was really impressed, and I think everyone got the feel of the workout. I wholeheartedly agree. I, I love this as a scale workout. There's obviously individuals who can't. Matt, you know, get to that those weights. Uh, I think it's 135, 185 for the gentleman, 95, 135 for the ladies. Yep. But for the, you know, average RX CrossFitter, you know, you RX most workouts in the gym. This is an awesome workout. I love that they put the bear crawl in. You know us. We're, we're very functional, movement-based. And it is after doing all those deadlifts and hand, hand release push-ups, by the way, the hand release push-up, if the standard is upheld, that is all the more, all the uh, as much or all the more difficult than handstand pushups, in my opinion. Yeah, kipping ones for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Those bear crawls are gonna feel spicy, and I saw it, all those athletes. It's spicy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, bear crawls is when you're fatigued. They're no joke, and and they do nothing to bring your heart rate down. That's good. <laughs> that's a good that's point. For damn sure. Yep. So, um, I mean, I had like, like I said, those those good. RX CrossFitters um, in my gym, they're not have they don't have high high skill mastery. Like they, they can get a muscle up, they can do decent handstand push ups. You know, maybe like a mid three to four hundred pound deadlift, not tons of capacity. Great workout for them. I mean, they were finishing right underneath that nine minute time cap, and they were just kind of bulldozing their way through the finish line on the on the bear crawl. So I was really really happy with the way that they brought awesome. that out. They didn't make it like a dumbbell overhead walking lunge, which really doesn't deliver quite yeah. the same stimulus you know what i mean right 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 i loved it yeah i, I like it I like, I like they it kept lot. it to the distance and the yeah and weight on hands that was good yeah um so you know this is uh week four uh, of the open um we got one more week to go but overall uh and i don't want to get you know too crazy with with the open just because i know we're more general fitness clientele you're not going to have the freaking elite crossfitters uh, diving into all of what we say. But what are your thoughts on the Open this year? Because this is profoundly different, in my opinion, than years before. Yeah, it has a definite different feel. I Well, I like it. I mean, maybe it's, you know, we've both been around to see all of them. Yep. Um, and I like the this. I think the scaled edition, especially the way they did it this year, is really cool. Uh, like that. I think the workouts have been challenging and they found a way to kind of bring a touch of more uh, maybe old regional-esque type workouts and feel in. Yeah. You know, the, the ability to scale makes a nice separation where we can throw stuff out that we never would have seen before. Yep. Good point. Um, I like I, that. That's actually a good point. Like those 2011, 2012, um, you know, maybe even 2013 regional style workouts. We did Diana as the first workout in 2012. Yeah. Um, and then we had a max snatch. Um, one of them was dumbbell snatches, um, in running, um, uh, another one where it was, you know, over that, it, it, you're right. It, 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 it's almost shifting Row, that pistol, regional, hang clean. Yeah. yeah. It's almost shifting that regional workout, kind of cutting it off where it's like, okay, those who are legit and who are going to be making regionals are going to, you know, be able to, to hang here. Um, and then from there, um, still giving good workouts out to the scaled athletes. Yeah. Well, the other thing I've noticed too is, uh, you know, and obviously it's a slightly different group of athletes every year, but every workout, every group that I've been, you know, involved with here has enjoyed and thought everyone was fun. Some of them are sort of painful and miserable and, you know, yep. all that stuff that we love to hate, but, um, you know, I, and I don't remember that ever being the case in the same way in other years. There's usually right. ones people just didn't want to do or, ah, oh, this sucks, you know? Yeah. But everybody's like, damn, that was fun. You know, everyone's pumped to do, you know, for each week, you know? Yep. I completely so, agree. Um, yeah. you know, I, I actually am looking forward to doing this scale one day. Like I'd much rather be doing this scale. I think it would be a much better stimulus. I think it would be a lot less, uh, you know, pressure, so to speak, but it would still be good workouts. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day where I don't have to necessarily do these RX and just kind of get some good training in, you know, four or five times a week, be able to go outside, be able to do this, but then also be able to participate in a way that I don't think it's beneath me. I think all these scaled workouts are, are good 
uh, for the avid CrossFitter who's not looking to go to regionals or competitive, that competitive. And it allows you to participate. It allows you to participate within the group. Yep, totally. And they also have a certain feel of the early years and the lows, you know, before things got, you know, crazier and elite, you know, that was, that's what workouts look like, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe, so, maybe not some of the compl- more complicated, multifaceted things, but, um, but just the loads and movements mostly in general. Someone actually let me know yesterday that, uh, and I don't know if you knew about this, was uh, Canada West gets five regional spots. So out of all of Canada West, you get five regional spots for that region. So Brent Fikowski right now is in fifth place in his region. Whoa, man. Yeah. All I know the, it's gnarly this year. And then then I, I think I saw, again, I have to go through this, but South America has its own regional, and they send one person. They just send the best person in the region, and they get to go to the games. So very different. Um, obviously, they're, they're yeah. starting to wait certain areas, and they're starting to see where the regional competitors are actually coming from. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Scott? Instead yeah, of, it's instead of having I mean, we're, balanced... we're in with, uh, you know, all of California this yep. year. Yep. So, uh, you know, it really changes the potential, you know, uh, field that will be going, you know, mm-hmm. for sure. You know, keep an eye on CrossFit Fort Vancouver, you know. Uh-huh. My friends up there, you know, this would be their, if they can do it, it'd be their 10th straight year going to the games. And it's also Adam Knifer's last year. He's going to retire after this year. He's been oh, on every wow. team. But now with only four of them and in with all of California, the road, you know. becomes much more challenging. Much more challenging. I mean, That's I, really I, cool. Really, really cool. Well, I, you know, I, I wish good luck to Fort Vancouver. I know that uh, you've uh, got a special place for those guys. Um, yeah. And uh, it's it's that time of the week, Scott. There's one last week to go. What prediction you, time. What are your predictions for open workout eighteen point five. Oh, by the way, well, before, we, before we go back, I just wanted to mention that I redid eighteen point three, and oh, yeah. um, I I got another. Um, 38 reps or something like that. Ooh, so I, 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 I got 48 reps after the muscle ups and that ended up being 50th in the region. Nice. So that's, uh, I think that's my best performance in a, in a open workout in, you know, since I made regionals in 2012. So nice. that was a good yeah, one for me. That's and, early, yeah. and, and of course, you know, obviously the, we go from the penthouse to the outhouse now, and now I got to throw around some right. deadlifts and things become a little more sticky. But I just yeah. wanted to throw that out there. and, and That's uh, awesome. Yeah. You know, uh, it was a good workout. And, um, you know, I was really happy for, with the performance. And even though I wasn't feeling awesome because doing that 14-minute workout took a lot out of me on Friday and be able to come back on Monday and, and hammer it pretty good, uh, it was good. This week, however, is probably going to be a one and done. Make sure, time, that, yeah. make sure that first attempt is a fantastic one. And if, 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 if a gun is to your head and you, it's Monday night, you got to do it. You got to do it. But I think uh, it's a one and done for most people here. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a lot of deadlifts to have to try and come back and do again. Yeah, that's a couple pot- days. potential of, of, of 90 deadlifts, half of them at 225, half of them at, at, uh, at uh, 315. So, all right. So this is old news. Let's talk about next week. What's your prediction? Well, I'd have to be – I think I'd be a fool to bet against thrusters in some way, though that could be a curveball. We haven't seen a repeat yet. Of course, the fifth workout has been repeat in the past, I think, on at least two occasions. Yep. Um, assuming that it's going to be a repeat and assuming it's going to have thrusters, which one do you think it would be? We've seen bur- bar over burpees, so maybe it's not that awful one. We haven't seen the Fran-esque one that was from repeat would be from some of the earlier years. Yep. 2013, uh, we did the 1550 two rounds of chest to bar thruster. Yeah. If after four minutes. I think it would be because we haven't seen pull ups I, I, in, here's in the any thing. way in our X. They might do that and say, forget the barbell, you're grabbing your dumbbells. That could be. And that would be. Disaster. That would be some disaster. Say that again, Scott. Ooh, 50 pound. I said the other, yep. I said the other thing we haven't seen, though I don't know if that they would fit in here, is uh, wall balls. Wall that balls. could be the first wall ball free 
open, but uh, can you imagine Chester Bar Fran with dumbbells? Ooh, that would be not a repeat, but some kind, either some kind of repeat, thruster repeat, Chester Bar. If I had to call, I would say one of the Chester Bar. So we could definitely say Chester Bar is going to be in there next week. I'm thinking so. I agree. You, you never know. I agree. That, that would be. I'd have to go ch- thrusters and chest to bar in some some manner. Okay. Or possibly a repeat of one of the. I think there were two different ones that had that in it, right? Yeah, there was there was the three. There was eleven point six, which was yes, that was eleven point six, three three six six nine nine, right? I think so. Yeah. And as high up the ladder as you can go, and I believe they yeah. repeated that the following year. Yeah, that was the, the year first after, repeat. Then the year after that, they did the fifteen fifteen two rounds yep. four minute. Uh, cap and if you made it, you made another four minutes. Yeah. The yep, following yep. year they did the row thruster, right? Uh, fourteen was though that was, the, was the first burpee. year the burpee burpee over bar the, yeah thruster. burpee over bar thruster. Then it was pain. the row bur- row bar thruster. Yep. Then it was. Did they repeat the burpee over the bar thruster? Yes. And then last oh, yes. year was the double under thruster. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, yeah, chest bar thruster. That's my bet, and I think you're the same. There we go. Yep, there we go. All right, perfect. Scott, you got anything else? Nope, nope, nope. I think I'm good. Well, we are almost done with the uh, open madness here, and we can get back to brass tacks and start uh, getting people more fit, more well, and have more longevity. But until then, I am Sean LaFlock. You can get me at Sean at CrossFitDarryBeach.com. I'm Scott Hagnes. You can get me at Scott at CrossFitPortland.com. Scotty, enjoy the rest of the week, man. Yeah, good luck this week. Thank you you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. Later, dude.